YouTube team keep it clean I hope y'all are having a wonderful night I just accidentally deleted 49 minutes worth of questions from subscribers that I worked on and yeah that was a little frustrating but I'm like ah uh, it is what it is um anyway uh sit down relax I feel like we're gonna be here for a long time because we got a lot to cover uh so my apologies in it well I'm really not sorry uh but Something that I'm also not sorry about I'm, I put it on record on Twitter I put it on record on this Bengals channel that I was on earlier today Ravens 21 Bengals 19 Let's get it Go shock the world Especially with all this craziness going on So uh, of course Lamar Jackson uh, He put out the tweet yesterday Talking about his injury Saying that he wish he could be out there with his guys But he still got swelling in his knee and whatnot. Um, basically saying, hey, I'm not ready, my body ain't ready, I can't play I want to play, but I can't play um, But then today, I'm not sure how it just started floating around today But there was an interview that Sammy Watkins Well, not even an interview, but uh, he was speaking in the locker room on Wednesday uh, And this was put out today Let, Let's just listen to some of the stuff that he had to say uh, In this league, this is from Sammy Watkins now uh, In this league, everybody's pretty much banged up, hurt uh, I don't want to speak for him, Lamar Jackson, and his situation and whatever he's going through with the contracts. I don't know what world he's in, but for me, you got a chance to do something special. We all know it, Lamar Jackson out there, this team is really freaking good, and special things can happen. Uh, he can wheel this team to a Super Bowl. I don't think he's thinking about it that way. So, with that being said, Sammy Watkins basically saying, hey, Lamar, you got a chance here to do something really special. And everybody in this league is hurt right now. So pretty much he's saying, like, uh, you ain't got no excuse to not be playing. I don't know what's going on with your contract. And I I'm hurt. You hurt. We all hurt. It's the end of the season. It's playoffs. So basically he's saying, hey, you got an opportunity that you're missing right now. And I, it was funny because I, I saw somebody, I forgot who it was, but they were like, Man, this is Sammy Watkins, the one telling somebody to play through an injury. Really? The irony It's Sammy Watkins. Now, now we know Sammy Watkins. He can play, but he's been hurt more times than most. But anyway, he also said, but he's got an opportunity to win a Super Bowl. I hope he hobbles back out there. Again, this is coming from Sammy Watkins. Like, again, everybody entitled to their own opinion, which is fine. That's great. But this is coming from Sammy Watkins. Like you, you throwing, you throwing some big stone, you throwing boulders. And your house is not even made of glass. I mean, the house has been made of paper. This is crazy. Anyway, let's keep, keep going. Uh, put him out for the, plat for the pass plays and don't run him at all. Now, Sammy, you've been in this offense for one year and about two games. And you mean it? This is a Greg Roman offense. And you talking about put him out there for pass plays and don't run him at all? Do you know what off who your offense is? Like, you, you should know better than anybody. You had Greg Roman in Buffalo. Like, come on now, baby. <laughs> he said, put him out there for put him out for, for the pass plays and don't run him at all. But you never know. That could be wrong. I'm being very selfish right now just to want him to be out on the field. But man, what a great thing it would be to see number eight touch the field this Sunday and we go out there and blow them out. But that's for Lamar and everybody else to figure out. Hope miraculously something happens. Somebody reach out to him, whether it's a coach or somebody, and he decides to play. I'm, I'm sure you got his phone number. It's probably a Florida area code. But anyway, but that's a question if he's healthy or not. I don't know. I haven't been watching him. So pretty self-explanatory stuff there. Then he continues. He said, I think the world is ready to see Lamar Jackson back on the field doing what he do best and get all the stipulations and contract stuff behind him. So Sammy is really thinking that this whole thing is contract related. That's what he's insinuating. I mean, he kept repeating the word contract and talked about the contract stuff. So he, he thinks it's contract related. And this is coming from a player. This is a little different because it's not coming from a, a media member or anything like that. It's coming from a player directly on the team. And, and then he continued. He said, um, I pray somebody talks to him like, man, just sign the deal. You know what I mean? And he get out there and hopefully if he's healthy, he can just come play this Sunday. We all know that's up to Lamar and whatever goes on. Hopefully they get something done. The world wants to see Lamar be a Baltimore Raven for the rest of his life. So, again, Sammy putting it back to being on a contract. 
So uh, anyway, uh, he said, I'm blessed to play with him. Uh, but the world wants to watch Lamar Jackson. That's a phenom talent, a talent that you rarely come by. Things that he do on the field and things that you see, to be quite honest, when he's out there, he makes everybody play better. Just to have him in that huddle, I pray that somebody reach out to him or that he's really truly getting healthy and can play, that he wake up Thursday and be like, all right, forget it, I'm playing. I think that would change the whole trajectory of our season. So Sammy Watkins with some very strong words right there. And again, this was on Wednesday. Lamar Jackson put out the tweet about himself on Thursday. Uh, and that whole like ordeal was just crazy in itself. Uh, I know there were a lot of people. Um, there's been a lot of there's just been a lot of discourse about the Ravens, period, as y'all all know. Um, but about the what Ravens fans deserve. That's what I've been seeing a lot of conversation about. Like, oh, some people are saying, oh, Harbaugh don't owe y'all nothing. Harbaugh don't owe the fans anything like that. Um, and then I've seen some people say, no, Harbaugh actually does owe that to the fans. The fans are the one that show up. The fans are the one rooting this team on. So he does owe that to the fans. Because, again, th this is not just about any random play. This is about the Ravens starting star quarterback, Lamar Jackson. And we just we wanted some updates. We wanted something, but we just have been getting really vague stuff, really tiptoeing around stuff. Um, and for me, I felt like Harbaugh knew because I'm like, hey, this is a, the head coach. This is the head coach of the team. He got to know about this stuff. But apparently, according to Barstool Banks, um, there's a lot more to this story. And you know what's interesting? Um, Barstool Banks, uh, an article that he wrote, uh, earlier this off season, it really kickstarted a lot of this stuff. Um, it really, it, it really kickstarted a lot of the uh, just the thoughts, the the rumors, the what it could be, the there's stuff going on behind the scenes. I remember he said there's stuff going on uh, that'll make your head spin. I never forget it. Um, but and, and I remember we 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 covered the article and it was just like, huh. And and that seemed to be the beginning of what to me seems like the end. Uh, for Lamar Jackson with the Baltimore Ravens But again, we'll, we'll see when we see But um, he did publish another article today um, And here we go Let's just, let's get into it We'll, we'll cover it piece by piece And I'm sure I, I'll leave the link to it So he can get his, his credit Of course, Boston Bank, shout out to him But I, I, I'll put the link so he can get his credit So you can read the whole thing for yourself as well so, uh, speaking about Sammy, Sammy Watkins, he said, what a monologue this is, especially from a guy who wasn't even on a team until 24 days ago. Uh, granted, he was on the Ravens last year and has a rapport with Lamar from then, but still, this is from the clouds and completely out of character from what is typically a tight-lipped locker room. But it's also telling what y'all get to. So, yes, a, a tight-lipped locker room. Yes, that's what the Ravens normally are. Ravens ain't so tight-lipped anymore, as we all know. We, we know that. Uh, we, we've seen it. The Ravens, like... With the Ravens, you can always tell when things are getting out of control. You can always tell. But, and, and recently things have been getting out of control. Uh, but anyway, he said, uh, it's more or less a plea for Lamar to come save the day, which is totally the scenario at hand. The team cannot go on a run without number eight. That's factual and this team knows it. But it's also dripping with skepticism that the injury is one that is truly keeping Lamar off the field. It may acknowledge a degree of mystery surrounding his health, but everything else in a series of quotes suggesting is, is suggesting he's making a business decision. So, yeah, that's what we said about the whole Sammy Watkins thing. Sammy Watkins is alluding to it being about the contract for Lamar Jackson. All right. So uh, and then Barstool Banks talked about how uh, it's important to note that despite these quotes being published on Friday morning, that Sammy said these things before uh, on Wednesday, which was before Lamar broke his silence and described the nature of his injury. So we did talk about that, too. Uh, yeah. L Lamar, this Sammy Watkins said all this stuff on Wednesday. So it was before Lamar tweeted the whole thing. Could Lamar have tweeted that as sort of a response to what Sammy Watkins said? Who knows? Could he have tweeted it as a response to everything that Harbaugh's been saying? Who knows? We may never know. But anyway, um, he said the fact that Sammy's sentiment even existed it at all is a problem in itself. And I do believe it's sentiment shared by at least some in that room. Last week, I had heard at least one veteran was fed up and that apparently Lamar Jackson doesn't. And this is how the veteran felt. Apparently, Lamar Jackson just doesn't want to play. 
So again, this is coming from Barstool Banks. He said he got his sources. Now, with Barstool Banks, I have to give him the benefit of the doubt. Because I know some people would be like, oh, it's Barstool Banks. Who is that? What is that? Every time Barstool Banks has said something, every time he has put something out, it's end up being true. It's end up being true. Uh, I remember there was the Marcus Peters trade. Every year he gets the schedule like super early, super early. And I know there's been other stuff that he broke too, but uh, over the years that I've seen, because I, I would I would see his name buzzing in a lot of stuff, uh, like big big Ravens type of news, big stuff. But so anyway, um, so apparently there, there's a veteran that's upset with Lamar saying they they fed up. Who could that veteran be? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who it could be. If if I had to guess, I would probably say like Calais Campbell, Justin Houston. Because I, I would say it was one of them because both of them would probably be like, man, I'm, I'm tired, man. I want to go home. I want to go home, but I'm out here trying to get a ring one last year. Lamar, I need you, man. But, and, well, if it's Calais Campbell, I'm tired. I'm trying to go home. Lamar, I need you, man. But anyway. Now, he did say, he said, whether that's actually fact or just an impression guys have, that's a huge problem for a guy that wants to be paid big money to lead a locker room for years to come. Uh, he also said, if you read my blog yesterday about Lamar's tweets, it's dripping with frustration that he let speculation run wild for weeks. Surely one could read that and wonder why I had little to say about the team, coaching staff, etc., cetera, uh, and and their roles in shutting down the speculation, that's because I believe the team has been largely left in the dark. There were rumors swirling a few weeks ago that Lamar had not been into the team facility to get treatment and rehab the injury. Most of that was fueled by the Baltimore Suns' Mike Preston, who casually slipped in a Q&A column on December 14th, the following quote. And we, of course, we remember this. We, we covered this quote. Uh, he, he, when Mike Preston said, it's no secret to any of the coaches or top members of the front office that Jackson is a slacker. And needs to have more due diligence in getting adequate rest, eating a healthy diet, being alert in meetings and workouts, and getting proper rehabilitation instructions. So, um, with Mike Preston, he put that out. And as we remember, like, I think a, uh, a little less than a month later, he, he put out an article that was a complete 180. Complete 180. So, I know there were people like, I mean, we, we questioned it too. Like, it, it's a little weird. It's a little weird. Like, you literally said one thing and then you turn around and said the exact opposite and a, a lot of people were like hold up that's fishy man maybe he like what what did he want to does he have access does he have access to the media access with the ravens and stuff or it was he was he getting threatened to lose his press pass or something i don't know i don't know if he has one or not but it was just weird it was just weird and, and we know like with the Ravens, you, you can't just, especially with the people with the press pass, you cannot just say anything. You can't. You cannot just say anything. You cannot just ask any questions. Your honesty has to be held in check if you want to keep your press pass. It, and it's true. But anyway, let's continue. He said, now it should be acknowledged that Mike Preston is, this is his words, not mine. I ain't this, I'm just reading. He said, now it should be acknowledged that Mike Preston is the requisite clown in the media here in Baltimore. He's basically Skip Bayless without a mic or a camera. Nobody takes him seriously. Again, those are his words. They, they are not mine. They're from the article. I am not saying that. Because uh, I ain't calling nobody a clown, goofy, none of that. No, that's, that's the article. Just need to make sure that's crystal clear. Uh, he says, so while the quote did raise a few eyebrows with some, it was largely ignored and written off. And to put that quote further to rest, Preston flip-flopped two weeks later like a $4 sandal from, from, from Sensations. Okay, okay. All right, all right, let's keep going. Oh, so then he put in the quote uh, from the, new, the newer quote from Mike Preston about Lamar. He says, Raven star quarterback Lamar Jackson has, been regularly, has regularly attended prescribed rehabilitation and treatment procedures for his injured knee and is on target to return within the four to six week recovery window as far as team trainers and physicians are concerned according to a league source. The source wouldn't make a prediction about when Jackson would step back on the playing field but said the quarterback has been perfect in his attendance and compliant with all rehab practices as he recovers from a knee sprain he suffered in the first quarter against the Denver Broncos on December 4th. So, Yes, that was where he flip flop. He completely turned it around, did a 180 on his original article. But let's continue. He said, but guess what? It pains me to say it, but the dude had it right the first time. So this is where things take a turn. Where Barstool Banks is actually saying, like, wait a minute. Well, Mike Preston originally said about Lamar Jackson and him missing the rehab treatments and stuff. He's saying that that 
is actually true. But let's continue. He said, um, in classic town, oh, see, again, this is from the article. This is not from me. He said, in, in, in classic town, just a fashion, he took the bait from whatever league source reached out and set the record straight two weeks later. Later, Now, he put league source in quotations and set the record straight in quotations as well. Basically saying, like, somebody told him, uh, write this article. Like, fix this. Um, anyway, he said, I strongly believe Lamar was not going to the facility for regular treatment and rehab in the first few weeks after the injury. And I've been told secondhand that that is true. Uh, and then he said, because you know how a lot of people would automatically think that, oh, man, you, you got told that by who? Who said that? And he said, OK, secondhand. So what? Why should you or I believe that? He said, because I know for a fact that he didn't he did not come in regularly for treatment and rehab last year. While Watkins was also on a team, mind you, either among other behaviors and incidents in recent years that are generally unprofessional. That's from a firm, trusted, more direct source who's no longer with the organization that has never wronged me before. Marcus Peters trade, Marshall Yonder retirement, annual schedule releases, all stuff I put out into the universe first, relying primarily on this source, sometimes after cross-checking with others. So he's saying that Lamar Jackson from last year uh, and Mike Preston, I think he said the same thing, too, about last year. And I think some some of them on the radio on 105.7, they said the same thing. I forgot exactly who, but he said that it said it happened last year that Lamar had mistreatments last year. So now Barstool Banks are saying, yeah, it happened last year, but he also heard that it happened this year as well. That Lamar mistreatments. Now, I've seen discourse on that because, of course, that had been a rumor that had been going around about. A month yeah about a month ago about a month and change ago it started um and then it picked up some buzz uh a couple weeks after it initially dropped um i've heard some people be like hey look that's that's not good that's not good that lamar jackson would be missing his rehab treatments like how bad does he really want to be out there if he's missing his re rehab treatments and yeah that would be very questionable like it's like if if you're hurt and you missing the rehab treatments to get better. Hey, what's up with that? Even though Lamar Jackson, he did, um, he did show the video. Uh, he, well, he reposted it from Isaiah Likely's thing that he was there. I know that was just one day, but hey, we, we don't know. But um, if it was true, then that wouldn't be good for his knee. Now, another thing on the flip side, what I've seen a lot of people say as well, they say, hey, that Ravens medical staff, <laughs> they can't be trusted. They ain't no good. Then they bring up Derek Wolf and his wife and all the receipts that they got from everything that they went through with the Ravens medical staff. And Derek Wolf put it out there. He said, man, this, this, that, that Ravens medical team, they are el terrible. That means like terrible in Spanish. Uh, so, again, it's been just a lot of back and forth. But anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, he also said, among many who cover the team, these transgressions aren't exactly a well-kept secret. If there's a Ravens reporter or blogger you follow and trust, there's a good chance that they have heard and know about these things to some degree. Most are just beholden to a higher level of journalism and have team access that they simply cannot put at risk by talking about things that they can't thoroughly substantiate. I'm not in that boat. So that's what I was talking about earlier, what it seemed like with Mike Preston when he sort of backtracked on his original statement. Uh, maybe I don't know if he got threatened or something like, hey, you you want to keep you want access to this team? I you better fix it and you better fix it fast, buddy. So I, I, I don't know. I have no clue. Um, continuing, he says, so why have I kept my mouth shut? So with him saying that he's insinuating that he's been knowing something for a little while. Uh, he said, because I love this team and there's been zero benefit to me singing. 2019 was the funnest year of football I've ever watched or at least until, well, you know. We all fell in love with Lamar, myself included, not just as a football player, but as a personality. He didn't just play football and play it well. He had a blast doing it and so did I. It was infectious. I championed this guy all over the internet. It was so fun and I wanted that to continue forever. I still do and have been holding out hope and a small part of me still thinks that can happen again. Me spilling the beans would have endangered that. So. He's saying that he'd been holding on to this stuff for a minute. And he's saying that if he would have put it out there to the public like he's doing now, that it could have possibly uh, messed up maybe the, the chances of Lamar Jackson staying with the Baltimore Ravens. I, I would think more so it could mess up the public perception of one Lamar Jackson to a lot of people. 
Uh, but continuing, he said, but the past two years have been so exhausting and I'm sick and tired of holding up this facade that the relationship between the team and Lamar is rosy. It's not. And I think we all could see that, uh, especially over this past year, especially how things have been going with this injury. Um, it's like crystal clear that there's something going on. And there's been something going on for a little while. Most of us that we've been sitting at the end of the bar. Um, we, we haven't quite been able to put our fingers on it, but you can just tell something is up. You can tell something's been up. So I think so many people have noticed that, uh, over time. Anyway, continuing, he said their relationship may not be contentious, but there's absolutely a disconnect and a distrust. So no big trust. He said that the disconnect has been clear every time John Harbaugh has stepped up to the podium the past month and been clueless as to how to even speak on the situation. Yes, I think he, even though we sitting all the way on the end, so many of us, we've all seen that. And again, me, I've been like, no, there's no way that Harbaugh doesn't know about what's going on with Lamar Jack. That's his quarterback. That's his quarterback. Lamar going to the team doctors. How could Harbaugh not know? It would not make any sense whatsoever if Harbaugh didn't know. But then Boss Bank said, hint. That's because John Harbaugh has been clueless and the distrust is evident in the fact that the front office hasn't given him the contract that I think most would agree that he has rightfully earned. It's been this way for a while and the fan base deserves to know the truth. The organization has done an incredible, I mean, incredible job holding water for him, which is more than understandable. It's been in their best interest to do so, whether that's to protect him as the Ravens long term quarterback or protecting him as a potential trade asset. I think it will be the latter, but. We'll, we'll see how this offseason goes. We're approaching a real crossroads here, and I have no idea what's going to happen, and I'm not so sure they do either. Lamar has always held his stuff, still does clearly. Uh, we've got teammates begging for him to get out on the football field. It's totally possible that his knee is truly messed up, and there's no way he could play on Sunday, and it's totally possible it's not, and he's choosing to protect his knee and his payday. That's his prerogative, and I can respect it, even if I don't like it. So, he's saying that, hey, this, this thing could be either way. Could be that his knee's just really tough or he just, he don't want to risk it because he ain't getting the biscuit. So we'll see. He said, but I do feel comfortable saying that everything would be better off if he had come to the facility for treatment and rehab the past two years or at least sooner in the comeback process. Whether or not sooner treatment would have changed his status and got him out on the field for these massively important games, we'll never know. But the appearance of him not having done his part to get back onto the field is a problem in itself. And that's my takeaway from what Sammy Watkins had to say. So, um, again, Barstool Banks, just, just to sum all of that up, he's saying that uh, Lamar and the Ravens, there's a disconnect. Again, that's something that we, we all can tell clear as day. Um, but he's also saying that Lamar apparently didn't, didn't was, for a little bit, was not going to the treatment. So he, he doubled down on that saying, hey, Mike Preston, Mike Preston might have backtracked, but he, he wasn't backtracking. So if that's the case, um, it, it would be unfortunate. It, it really would. Because like I said, if you got a problem, then you got to get that problem fixed. Uh, you want to get that problem fixed as soon as possible. Um, so and apparently, like he said, they, there's the veterans. That's, there's a veteran, at least one veteran that's on a team that's fed up, fed up with this whole thing, with this whole ordeal. Um, my conclusion on this whole thing, I just don't think it's going to end good. I, I, I really don't. I don't think this relationship is going to end good. I, it just and again, the, with all these articles and stuff that just been getting dropped over and over and over, it just feel like it's best. It, it'll be best for both parties to just go their separate ways. Um, if it is true that there is a lack of trust, trust is one of the hardest things to build up and one of the easiest things to break down. One of the easiest things to break down and, and it takes so long to build it up and you can lose it like that. It can be broken like that. And if you are going to be committing a large amount of money to a player and if this player is asking you to commit a large amount of money to them. But if Lamar don't trust the Ravens, if the Ravens don't trust Lamar and I, I just don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. Um, and again, I I haven't 
I haven't seen it happening for a while. Even before this, we even looked at this article. Even before this whole Sammy Watkins thing, it's, it's been this way for a while for me. It because I just I don't see it, and I, I didn't see it before uh, when Lamar asked for whatever he asked for, and Ravens didn't meet his demands. Then after this season, I, I don't see them being like, all right, we'll meet the demands now. I just I, I don't I don't see it happening. So I think it'll be best. I mean, <laughs> best uh, relationship-wise, if both parties move on, <laughs> I don't think it would be best for the Ravens. But uh, like, I, I just it's it's because it's just it's, it's it seems to always be something, man. It seems to always be something. It's always something going on, and it just. But they they already showed like even with without. Well, I don't know if this stuff if this stuff is true. I don't know how long a lot of it's been going on. But the Ravens, they already showed, like, we don't believe in Lamar Jackson. We're not committed to Lamar Jackson. We don't believe in him as our answer at the quarterback position. They've already shown that by the way that they've operated. They've already shown that. They've been, they've been told us. They've been telling us that for years. Look at, what the, look at what they put out there on the football field. They've been showing that for years. Look at the coaching staff. Look at the personnel. Look, look, look at it. They've been showing it for years. And you see these players like these these other franchise quarterbacks, especially when it comes to getting the deals. Oh, that that's taken care of. That gets taken care of quick. If they believe in that quarterback, they take care of that deal quick. Or if they believe in that quarterback, or they really want to make themselves believe in that quarterback, they surround that quarterback. We've seen it so many times. Ravens have told it they don't believe in Lamar. But with all this extra stuff, with all this extra stuff, it just makes it more likely to me that the relationship is gonna be severed this offseason. My, my thinking is that it's going to come down to a tag and trade. A tag and trade. Where he goes, no clue, but I, I just don't see it happening. And from Lamar's end, if, if he not reporting for, to the, the, the medical to get his stuff checked, from his end, is it that, hey, does he not trust the medical staff? Is, is there something going on there where it's like, oh, ah, I don't know about these guys. I don't know about them. Cause maybe I don't know if he looked at Ronnie Stanley, and they were, and he was like, "Oh, they cleared Ronnie Stanley. Ronnie Stanley got cleared to play last season. He played in one game and would look terrible in that Raiders game. Never played another snap again. Is it because Derek Wolf? They were getting ready to let Derek Wolf come back and play. He he got designated to return from injury reserve, and then never played again. Is it Nick Boyle? Is it Pat Ricard who came back last year too and then he wasn't even fully healthy? I think he had knee problems as well. Is it was it J.K. Dobbins from this year? J.K. Dobbins was clear to play. It's like, all right, he's straight. And then, oh, well, oh, nope. Oh, he he gotta have a little cleanup surgery. Was it with Rashad Bateman last year or even this year? Especially this year. Rashad Bateman comes through, then then he gets hurt. And it's like, oh, uh, Rashad Bateman, he's in the walking boot. Oh no, he's he's weak to weak. Day to day, Rashad Bateman, he'll be fine. Oh, well, then we hear a little bit later, oh, Rashad Bateman elected to have season-ending surgery. So that you, you got you to gotta look at this thing from both sides, from both sides. And I know it can be tough. It can be really tough because there can be people that's on one side or there can be people on the, that's on the other side. But try to look at it from both sides. That's what we're trying to do right now. We're trying to look at this thing from both angles. So both sides, like, that's why I feel like with all this stuff on both opposite ends, just end it, man. Just end it. Just end it. As much as I would hate it, just, just end it. Because this whole, th it's going to be an ongoing thing. It's always going to be something. It's always going to be something. So I, I would say let, let Lamar Jackson go fly. Let him go fly somewhere else. Let him, let him, let him go do his thing. Somewhere else. Because, again, even before this article, they don't believe in him. You could tell by the offense, the personnel, the coaching staff, the, the players they put out, the every, you, they don't believe in him like that. And I know some people, oh, what, what do you mean the Ravens don't believe in him? They, they traded back in the first round and picked him in with the 32nd pick. They were the only team that gave him an opportunity. Oh, I hate hearing that. Like Lamar Jackson wouldn't have got picked up by somebody else. He certainly would have got picked up, but he got picked up by the Ravens. But while they gave him an opportunity, they didn't let him fully blossom. 
And they didn't even try to let him fully blossom. Even after he showed you that he was ready to blossom. So, I mean, I, I would have trust issues too. And I told y'all about that already. Like if I was working a job or something and I, I, I proved to that job, like, hey, look, I'm, I'm capable. I can get this thing done. I'm ready for a raise. I'm, I'm ready to have uh, better coworkers around me so I could bring them along too. Let's get it. But if the company looked at me like, mm, no, we, we straight. You, you can stay where you're at. We just, you, you hold it down there. We, we, we like you, but mm, you stay where you're at. It, it's frustrating because I've been there before personally. I've been there. So I, I get it. I ain't been there on no multi million dollar deal. Well, I'm way more than multi million dollar deals, but. I ain't been there in that financial status, but with the situation, I get it. I get it. And it's like I said, it I checked out. I checked out. I checked out for a long time too. And I was just waiting, 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 waiting till I got out. So we'll see, man. We'll we'll see how this thing turns out. We'll see how this thing goes. But team keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And we'll just have to see what ends up happening next. We out.